tốt Yes, I do. Okay. What I've done is checked off the people I see on screen already, and that's West, Bachhuber, Cook, Sullivan, Giebert, Potter, and Kenora Zapp. Okay. We're here. First item is approval of the minutes from March 24th, 2021. Do we have a motion? This is a uh, warrant. I'll approve that. I'll make that motion. Okay. A second. Back over a second. Okay. Any <clears> discussion? <throat> okay. If not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Okay. Mi minutes are approved unanimously. And we have one agenda item. Potential general implementation plan amendment to allow. I think you got the I, wrong. I got the, the wrong agenda. I'm the sorry. Wrong agenda. You do. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Look on the screen. I can't see it. I'm blind. Almost. Okay, project eligibility for stormwater utility funds. I think this is Eric. Yes, I'll take it away. Um, so since last month, I did quite a bit of research on this and uh, point of this memorandum, I guess, is to try to give staff a framework to present uh, fundable projects to you guys without uh, revisiting this uh, argument constantly. Um, first studies I found were from 2006 and 2010 where they were looking at feasibility and ERUs. Uh, the report that I attached is from the precursor to the SWUB, which was uh, Stormwater Facilities Maintenance Committee, you know, when they presented their recommendations to the council in 2012, um, you know, I, I tore through all the minutes and it's, you know, it's pretty obvious that the intent has pretty much been agreed upon as, you know, we want to fund maintenance of uh, major stormwater facilities. Um, you know, at the last meeting, Alder Sullivan asked for the uh, list of assets. Rich and I tracked that down right away. That was very helpful. But the issue I see with it is if we're strictly going to limit things to this, then people who are not, or lands that are not draining to these facilities are you know, they've got a very good case to make that they shouldn't be paying into the stormwater utility. This is similar to uh, land that drains directly into a water of the state without <clears throat> passing through the city's system. You know, what are they, they're not contributing runoff to the system, so why should they pay? Um, Eric, that's true for uh, everyone that lives around the lake. Yeah. And they're eligible for a credit or a deduction, let's say. They're eligible right. for a credit. I don't know if it was ever resolved how uh, that was going to work. There were discussions about, you know, if, if people were going to be offered those credits without having to pay for a review fee, because obviously a review fee would be... Uh, you know, much more costly than just paying into the stormwater utility itself. Eric, I'm fairly certain they were offered the credits. Well, I'm not sure anybody's receiving a credit. I think we need to check just the billing for like Middleton Beach Road. Yeah. And see if they're being billed. Yeah. I know we I'll... discussed it quite a bit with Gary. Well, I can, uh, I will check it again and report back to you. And that's also going to change once they redo the road, right? 
because mm -hmm. all of those all of those front yards are now going to drain into the street and into our sewer systems. I understand the backyard won't, but I let's think say it's the backyard the gets them out of it. Well, they they get a credit for the portion of their property that does not drain to the roads drainage system. So that is essentially the backyards facing the, the lake. That's right. very common. That's the way it's done for every uh, utility I've worked with throughout the state. So it's it's not that hard to figure out. You just you can figure out which land is draining to the lake, which which part is not. Yeah, that's and I you know I asked Larry Beckler for his opinion. I sent him a copy of a PSC <laughs> opinion from. 20 years ago that talked about direct drainage and right. all that kind of stuff. Um, right. So I see this as very similar. Larry and I exchanged a couple of emails, but he hasn't come back with uh, any definitive direction on this. You know, yeah. as a non-lawyer, I think this is uh, obvious to me, but. Eric, I think there. there's also some area over I don't know the name of it, but it's in that steep ridge area off of Century that goes downhill towards the lake, very wooded. Rich, yeah. can you help me on what the names of the streets Baskerville? are? Well, like by Baskerville. And... Baskerville. Uh, I, I think. Why Nona? The guy that used to work for T Wall is an engineer. Yeah. Lived yeah, there yeah. Now. He used to live up in North Lake. Yeah. Okay. I'm forgetting his name. Anyway, he made Andy a, Inman. Andy, Andy Inman. Andy, Andy Inman. Inman, yeah. We had lots of discussion with Andy uh, about whether those streets qualified or not. <laughs> Like Can I suggest we not digress too much down this road? I think yeah. Eric's making a great point here that if we exclude areas from funding, <clears throat> it's no different than they're not contributing to a problem. They don't need to pay into the to the to the fixing of it. Correct. And that's yes. that's Thank the you, main yeah. issue here. Yes. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's item one, and I just want to suggest that you know we can still prioritize the things that you want to prioritize, but if you put a strict rule in place, uh, I think we're asking for uh, trouble. Um, mm -hmm. And then the, the second part of this is back to the definition of maintenance. So what I tried to do was categorize things into different you know, types of deficiencies that need to be solved. And basically, A, B, C, and D are things that just, you know, we have to fix it this way for regardless of the reason. If it was a design error, construction error, a change to current standards that weren't in place, et cetera. And I would like for those categories to just be considered maintenance outright. And then the fifth category is a little bit different. That's, you know, type E. And that's where we would see an opportunity to improve performance, you know, be that uh, by any circumstance, if it was just the location or the funding was available somewhere, or, you know, it just makes good, good sense from a, an efficiency standpoint, a cost standpoint. And that would be the category that I would recommend we keep in this kind of nebulous of uh, let's go ask Stormwater Utility Board if they think this is fundable or partially fundable. Um, and that's, you know, that's about it. I'm hoping that if we can develop a more precise framework here, then we can ease these discussions and, you know, hopefully even eliminate them in a lot of circumstances. Yeah. 
Yeah, Eric, I think you've done a really good job on this. It certainly fits with what I had in mind. And I think, Jim, you can probably confirm this with us working with the friends for all the publicity when we went to referendum. But it was leaving out billing, uh, street sweeping, GIS mapping of individual parcels or at least residential parcels and so on to keep the cost down. But this certainly fits in terms, in my view of maintenance and we didn't want it to be construction of a totally new facility. Does that fit with what you remember when we worked with the friends? Well, I, I guess I'll make my little soapbox now and um, then I'll get off. But I looked at this stuff pretty carefully uh, when, when this came out since the last meeting. I talked to Eric about it also earlier in the day. You know, and to me, yes, I'm fully supportive of the two recommendations, first of all. So those, if, 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 if anything, I would have included E in that second recommendation and not made it a, I would have dropped off the last sentence, but that's, that's me. To me, and you tell, somebody tell me if I'm wrong, this, regardless of the reports, the minutes, other things that have been presented in the last, <clears throat> whatever, 10 years, is not is the ordinance itself the driving uh, factor here, the driving uh, uh, guidance for what we're allowed to do? Yes, the referendum. No, no, the ordinance, the ordinance, chapter nine, not the referendum. Uh, that's a question, I'm not. I'm the, not. The ordinance was, was overly broad in terms of what the council wanted to have done. And well, that's the point of contention, right? Well, Mike, you, you say that, Mike, but yet that's what got adopted. That's that's the words on the page. Except that the what we're saying Mark. is that Mark. what council wants to do is, is what council's intent was at the time of the stormwater referendum was to fund these large projects because Mark, they weren't getting would... funded any other way. That right. was a lot of it, but I think we need to go back to how it was presented to the public and the actual wording in the referendum. Doesn't matter. It, it, yeah, that, that's the it, point is that the, is that the referendum at, at um, Gary's request was overwritten to what council intended because he was looking for for the. No, that's right the on, ordinance. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the wording at the referendum, and I'm also talking about all of the publicity that we gave to the public so they could vote on the referendum. Now, whether that's legally binding or not, that is what we ask people to vote on. And that's what I feel is well, what we should go yeah. by. But even if you go through that, right? So I, I would have problems with several of these steps, right? I, I think the overriding concern from a council perspective when the referendum was passed was that we were trying to find a funding source, a dedicated funding source for these large facilities because they were not getting any attention any other way, right? That is the, what initiated me getting that task force set up right and council's um, intent at the time was to restrict it to to put these facilities back to the way that they were designed do we have meeting uh videos of council from that time i rather oh council probably i don't historically know where they're stored but i suppose well, that could, might be the place to get the answer to this because that's where the discussion would be we I did a presentation at council and you do have that somewhere and we voted on it and I think the vote was about five three I know the mayor was opposed I think Joanna Richard was 
I mean, well, this is quite like, a few years ago. I'd like to know the exact wording of that of that motion then, I guess. I, yeah, I, I still... think that's really important. And I think what was presented in that presentation is important. Well, I'll still contend that what's in the doc in the ordinance about voted on and approved by the council has precedence. I, I, tell me if I'm wrong, but that's that's how I read this. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the issue really is is that that was Gary's attempt to broaden the playing field, but that was never the intent of council. But the council voted on it, Mark. Yeah, I mean, I then they should have seen that, and, and that's part of the part of the the, the dispute here. Yeah. Is that what we're trying to do is, is help you understand that even though it, the ordinance is written broadly, the council does not want to act broadly. But the council, we don't have to act that broadly. We simply can't act on something that's not in the ordinance. You're you're allowed to act that broadly. You don't have to do it that broadly. Right. I'll, I'll go along I'm with saying. that. Ken, you had something to say, I think. Ken? <clears throat> Look, if council's unhappy with it, they should change it. I mean, I, yeah. I totally agree with what you just said. So. So, um, regardless, uh, you know, Eric and, and Richard have come up, and I know they've talked to other city staff members about these two recommendations. Um, I'll I think make a could I make a suggestion that we present Eric's recommendations to council to vote on is this acceptable for stormwater that's, that's, utility uh with an explanation of what these things actually are and then a clear explanation of what we're not funding that other utilities do and let us vote on that again because we are spending a lot of time arguing about this and we argue about it at council because different council members interpret it all different levels of you know, interpretation. So it's not real clear. Yeah, but if we do this, the vote, the vote by council has got to be to change the, the ordinance that created. No, it wouldn't be to necessarily change it, but just to come to an agreement well, of this I don't is agree. what I don't... we see as maintenance. Well, no, I don't. Not you're. I think that's dishonest to do it that way. Yeah, I think that's a change without distinction. Is what he's really saying, Susan. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I be really blunt here, Mark? Please. I am. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. You seem to be the person that has the most concern about restricting what is considered maintenance. Yes, I do. Because, because and, the original intent, I believe, was that we needed to restrict, right? This has always been about funding source, right? And it hasn't been about policy. It's been about funding source. And my concern since this whole thing started was that we not waste the fees that go into this fund with Correct. things that were not clearly maintenance, right? But you're defining maintenance. The council defined what maintenance was. Right? At the time, the council agreed what maintenance was, right? As an example, and even you did, we, we, we all came to this agreement that said that we could fund things that would take things back to the original plan but no more. And that's been the standard. Yes. Yeah, so, so what as an example, A, the first part of that, that's acceptable, but the second thing is not. If there are design oversights, you're changing the design, which means that you're typically improving the asset beyond maintenance. Right for me, I, we did not discuss it at that level at council. No, what we said was it was to be brought back to the original designs. Is that anywhere but, in writing? I I don't know. And, and I don't. I can say. I guess what I'm trying to say is I was the one that presented 
the information to council and someone made a motion and we voted on it. And if we didn't discuss it at that level, the definition uh, is getting yeah. made more precise and detailed than what we discussed it that was presented to council. My recollection is that we had lots of back and forth as to what was maintenance and that the that the winning uh, definition was to was restoration to original design. Susan, may I interject? Yes. I didn't find anything that specific in the minutes and I understand that's not a full representation of the discussion. Right. The only May 20th, 2014, there was a discussion about whether or not it was going to say confined to maintenance of previously installed stormwater management facilities or confined to maintenance of installed stormwater management facilities. And the way it ended up, and this is resolution 2014-34. The way it ended up was it was phrased as confined to maintenance of installed stormwater management facilities. But I never found anything that got any more specific about maintenance than just the word maintenance. That's my recollection. You know, and I'm not having problems with these items that are listed on here. I think they all fit in the big picture of we we want to maintain our stormwater facilities. You know, if we were to maintain Misty Valley to its original design, um, frankly, we would be wasting our money. It's a flawed design, yeah. Yeah, and that's what, I mean, that's the practical thing that I could see citizens, we want to keep these maintained in good working condition. And if we have to redo one because it was badly designed and isn't functioning, we should redo it. So, you know, guys, part of this dispute uh, for funding was because Water Resources had lots of money, but wouldn't spend it, <laughs> right? Uh, and so if you look at this, if you look at number A, I think there's room for, for a little bit of both. The concern that I and other members of council had was that we the stormwater utility should not be funding things that should be paid for by water resources. So if, for example, Misty Valley is such a disaster, then the funding to bring it back to the original plan would be an allowable expense. But to move beyond that, to, to make the design changes needed to, to make it work better would have to be funded from another source. Are you talking about that source being fees and lua? If that's potential, sure. capital would be another potential, right. um, whatever, right? I, but, that, but that's the point, is that this is a funding mechanism and the intent was only to fund back to the original design. So anything that's in addition to the original design has to have a different funding source. That's so that, so the, not whether they get done or not. So Mark, the solution or the approach is a static. It costs one X to put it back to the way it got designed and one and a half X or another half an X to get it to where we want it to be. We need to adopt it in a most likely in a capital improvement plan, right? In a capital budget, bond the money. They have two sources of funding for that project. Two sources. Yes. One could be stormwater utility, the other capital borrowing or use of fees and luov. Yeah, I don't think fees, that, tell me, help me out here if anybody knows. I thought fees and luov were always, real, weren't they always 
I don't know, 20,000 or less as far as the balance goes. Do we ever have much oh, more than no. that? This thing had $800,000 in it when we made these choices. Yeah. I don't think fees in lieu of should be used for correcting uh, design flaws, though. And that's not the intent of fees in lieu of. I think there's 300 roughly in fees in lieu currently. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm mistaken then. But I yeah. think it's been sitting there for a while, too. It's been sitting there because we've been using stormwater utility. I would, I would counter that the, the appropriate use of fee in lieu would be to make these design, um, to pay for the design changes that were necessary for the, for the facilities that we have. And, and that's never, I, I don't think that en enough people share that view. I know some of city staff do, but have never pushed it. Right, so if, if for example, you wanted to, to, to deepen the, confluence pond, right? That's not something that the utility should pay for because it's it's an expansion. Mm. But the, the, design of the design to do that is appropriate to be paid for by fees in lieu. I'll agree with, I'll I'll agree with that one, Mark, but not Misty Valley. Oh. Warren, if I might jump in, is that because Misty Valley is more of a conveyance system as to a pond. No, we're saying Misty Valley is a design flaw. So it's not to improve the process removal or sediment rem removal or uh, reduce flood peaks. It was a design problem. And Warren, before we, I don't know that, if that's a fact or not. Do we know, does anybody know? I mean, was it put in according to the Plans that were submitted and approved of by the city, in other words, by water resources. If Misty that's the Valley. case, yeah. Sure, I think so. Um, you know, but the issue I see with going down this road is that it's not as simple as saying, uh, well, you know, we've got 500 yards of excavation and we're going to allocate 250 of it to. Uh, maintenance and 250 of it to an improvement. Yeah. Yeah, Misty Valley has, you know, it's listed more than once here. It has design flaws. It has, you know, aged and it's failing in that way. It's no longer in compliance with standards. So, you know, the next time we would update the master plan, you know, we wouldn't be getting as much credit out of it, and we'd have to pay more into uh, adaptive management to mm -hmm. stay current with uh, our phosphorus deficit uh, or performance deficit. So this is exactly what I'm trying to avoid is having to parse out every single project because it's really a time suck. You know, I spent a lot of time just doing this, I feel like in the four months that I've been here, I've spent an inordinate amount of time just dealing with this one issue. And, you know, it's keeping me from solving other problems. It's keeping me from solving these problems, keeping me from being able to find things for you guys to fund because I can't find anything that meets this if that's the case, then we should just shut the utility down, which, no. is, which is also envisioned as well, right? There was a, there was a list that we wanted to, to attack, right? And, and if there's nothing left on the list, we should shut the utility down and say, listen, we've done such a great job. We don't need to c continue to collect money. There's work to be well, done. That's These totally referenda right. passed two to one. And no voter understands any of this. They think we're maintaining things and fixing things, and we're not doing it. You said, Mark, that the problem with water resources were that they weren't spending the money. There's projects to be done. It's only butting up against this very strict definition of maintenance. And that's appropriate. Well, I guess that's up for council to decide, or that's what I'm asking for anyway. 
questions. I think we need to give a recommendation to council. And I'm going to still come back to what the general information we provided to citizens, which was to maintain facilities and not fund billing and street sweeping. So we're not GIS mapping. So you think the, gen, the average citizen thinks that we should not use the money to improve our stormwater flood control situation. They think we should not be using that money in that manner. No, I'm Is saying that, that the general citizen thinks we should not be paying for street sweeping, billing, and GIS mapping as part of the stormwater yeah. fees that are collected. But, but I'm hearing from other council members, Mark, you, I'm hearing you say that, that the no, average but, citizen does not think we should improve our stormwater flood control system. No. With, I, with, that, with that money, with that source of money. I think there, not, there needs to be, so this is, again, it's always been about funding. And there was such a backlog of projects that needed to be done. I think we need to be true to that maintenance mode before we can move on to anything else. And I'm not being, I don't know that I have warm fuzzies that all of the maintenance projects that were backlog in 2014 have been addressed. So before we move on to start saying that, you know what, let's start improving things. Someone needs to, to produce a report that says, you know what, in 2012 or in 2014, <clears throat> when we passed the referendum, we acknowledged that these systems needed design or needed to, to be brought up to maintenance standards. We have accomplished that task. And now we're gonna start moving on to, to making other changes to, to our, our facilities. I think until we get to that point, we need to restrict it to strictly maintenance, right? Well, that definition or what you're saying, what I'm hearing is, it sounds like each of these facilities is functioning in a set manner, which is okay. And then it's ignoring weather conditions and new regulations and things that cause the equivalent of potholes and roads and so on. And all of that's to be ignored. No, I'm suggesting that there's a priority that needs to occur. And yeah, the like a five-year road plan that needs to be reevaluated. And we keep moving around which roads need being repaired based on the current state that they're at. But we had an inventory of things that we needed to do back in 2014. No one has ever come back and said, this is what we agreed that needed to be done. And we've completed them. Right? And... Quite honestly, I think until somebody can produce that report and say that all of these activities were completed based from the stormwater utility, that we shouldn't move on to whatever other things people might think appropriate. Uh, so you're saying that none of the stuff in the storm should have been, should be repaired. We have until a separate. We no, no, you have a separate referenda for that. Right? We're, we're producing, we're collecting yeah. 30 bucks of, of, of an ERU to fund the storm repair. Okay, this is the accountant versus who wants things in a nice little compartments <clears throat> versus the citizen or older person that wants stormwater facilities maintained because it's so important to the community. Okay, produce the report that says all the stuff's taken care of. I don't have it. I know you don't. <laughs> Just, but Gary in order to, had it somewhere. In order to move on to say, you know what, we've finished the first stage of our stormwater utility plan. These are the things that were deficient in 2014 
and we've acted on all of these things. And now we're ready to start making other changes that are appropriate and that fit under the, the language of the ordinance. But I don't think we should get there. I don't think we should jump ahead because it's a, it's a shiny new project. We need to finish what we, what we promised we would fix. Are any of these shiny new projects, they were all in place when we did the uh, yeah, referendum. Tiedemann Pond, Esser Pond, Graber Pond were all thought of at the time to be naturally occurring, what, sinkholes, not sinkholes, but- Potholes. Potholes. Prairie potholes. That should not be, that don't need to be repaired. And yet all of a sudden we're spending no. money to two- They need to be, there's work that needs to be done simply because all the construction around them drain dirt into them. I, my recollection is that we've had heard other people's other experts say, you know what, that's not really the case. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I, that the people on this committee would agree with that. Anyway, we have somebody got on to this come committee up with that said we, don't, we shouldn't be maintaining them at all. In any case, again, go back to the original list that, that it was in existence in 2014 when, the, when this whole thing started and say, you know what, we promised that we would fix these things and we have. Eric, can you find oh. that list? No. Does that list even exist anymore? Did that list go to council? I would imagine that a lot of these same ponds were on that original list. Um, I'm not sure, I guess, what all SWUB has approved funding for. And I can certainly go back and track it down, but I, I don't agree, Mark, that with the whole uh, tenor of saying we're done, because I think Nothing could yeah. be farther from the truth. I would say we haven't even started. And you can say, well, Esser Pond, we don't need to do anything with that. Mm. That's a prioritization thing. But I see that there's a whole ton of work that needs to be done. And <clears throat> I just can't get it done because I can't find anything that makes sense to do with only restoring it to plan grade. You know, the maintenance requirements aren't the same as they were in 2012. You know, there's just too many variables to, to give it that narrow of a, you know, of a definition. Or approach. Okay. I, we have these two staff recommendations brought to us. I'm making a motion and we can vote it up or vote it down that these two staff recommendations be forwarded to the finance committee and the, and the council for their consideration of, uh, of implementation. Do we have the second? Second. Okay. Is that Potter? Is, yeah. Okay, further discussion. Uh, Jim, I will I say- one, I just wanna add one thing before we vote on it is, well, I okay, go ahead, Warren, and then I've got some things I want to say in discussion. Yeah. Well, we're not done with maintenance by the very definition of maintenance, something that's reoccurring. So, like uh, a confluence pond, we dredged it, uh, but it's going to be have to be dredged again. So, it's going to fill up with sediments. That's the, that's the purpose of confluence pond, to trap sediments. So, it's going to have to be done on a reoccurring frequency, whether it's every five years or 10 years, we don't know yet. Yeah, good point. Yeah, so maintenance is reoccurring on all of these facilities that are in place. What I'm a little concerned on, and this is the politics of it, is we have a very tight city budget. And I don't know if other than Mark, the rest of the committee is aware of it. <coughs> Uh, council has voted to approve two and a half million in capital borrowing for big projects of which these would all be that. The mayor has, uh, 
promise 2 million approximately in road repairs every year. That leaves 500,000 for the entire rest of the city for any projects. That becomes incredibly competitive. So I, my big concern in trying to just be practical on this and getting, I think staff has come up with a good idea is this is the only way we're gonna solve all these continuing um, stormwater repair, maintenance, whatever issues that need to be done going forward. And with climate change, we're going to have increasingly more. And we're still contending with all the phosphorus and sediment problems that we had back when we started the utility. So I'm just concerned we have to be, and it might be that we need some of you to help convince other council members of the practicality of this or help me come up with good explanations for it. Keeping in mind, I do not serve on finance. So what's at finance gets voted on and then the other four members of council will get to vote on it. Well, let, okay, so let me ask the question here, Susan. Is this, by the way this is worded in the memo, does it have to go through a different committee before it goes to council or can it go right from SWAB to the council as a, as a for their consideration? The utility um, is advisory to the finance. The structure has to go to finance first. Okay. Yeah, I think it does have to go to finance. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so Susan, I understand the tightness of the budget. We're seeing that in parks also. But the fact that the budget is so tight, does that compel SWEB to fund things that normally would be funded through water resources? Or uh, are we the low hanging fruit with money? Is that? Uh... Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Jim, what I will we're say... the ones with deep pockets. Well, that's nobody's, nobody's trying to say well, that we were going to be funding other things. I think what Susan's trying to say is Can that- Can I say what I want to say? Sure, go ahead. Back when I just, and I think it was with Mark, decided that water resources wasn't doing enough to get this utility going. In that presentation, I said, we always have things that come up on the capital budget. And we go through the alphabet on finance and choose which projects get funded. And then we get to water resources and it's at the end of the alphabet and we've run out of money. And nobody sees it because it's not a visible problem or at least at that time, because we hadn't had the flood. They weren't seeing how dirty the water was. That's where the problem is. It's at the end. And I don't think people still recognize the importance of stormwater management. Um, in terms of voting at council, that was the hardest group to convince to go to referendum. It was not the citizens, but I think it was a five, three vote the mayor voting against, Joanna Richard against it. The current mayor voted against it when he was on council, Joanna Richard and someone else, probably from the older part of the city. Jim Wexler, I know, was real concerned about it because he represented renters. No one was getting the magnitude of the problem. I I bet, they got it, it. I bet they got it on August 23rd, 2018. They yeah. did. And Joanna actually told me she realized how important it was. But she's no longer on council. Yeah, I understood. So a okay. lot of this is just getting people to understand what stormwater is and how big a problem it is. And that it's not just flood control. It's pollution control. 
and getting water to move through so that we have dry basements and stuff like that. And it's basically all visible, invisible, other than a few nice looking ponds. So that's what we're up against. The same thing was true for the referendum. It was harder to get it through council than to get citizens to vote for it. But they did vote for it and I'm not convinced. <clears throat> I mean, I think they voted for it for reasons that the referendum presented. The, the ponds, the pheasant branch, um, the, the problems that uh, they saw and said, yes, we would like to fund. Yes, the, the citizens, Jim, are not the problem. It's the council and mayor. Well, they passed the, uh, they passed the referendum based on the information the referendum suggested was going to occur with the money that they were expecting to pay into uh, the city for those particular um, visible items and beyond. But I don't know if some of this is what the citizens would have anticipated coming from the referendum money. That, I, that's uh, how I feel. I'd like to make an amendment to your motion that um, staff provide us an update of the projects that have been completed since the inception of the utility in comparison with the, the projects defined at the time of the referendum so that we know that, that it is um, appropriate to expand the scope slightly as, as per these recommendations. Um, okay, Mark, but I don't remember. Uh, yeah. Susan, I get to respond to this, Susan. This is my, my emotion. So okay. I don't know, um, and maybe I'm going to repeat what you just said, Susan, but I don't have any problem with the staff putting together a list of the projects that have been funded. I don't, I'm not aware of, and I was around back then, that there was a written list of what needed to be funded in 2014 that can be referred back to. And even if there is, and it says, you know, maintain South the South Pond or the Confluence Pond. Well, that just because we've had these discussions for 10 years, what that means to everybody is different when they wrote that on the list. So anyway, my, my point, Mark, would be if you want to have a list of what has been funded, I'm, I'm, I will accept that as a friendly amendment. Yeah, I, th I think, well, my recollection is that there was a list because we had to have that as, as supplemental backup to get it through council that we had to come up with a, a, a one to five year plan as to what we would, would try and get done as, as part of the, the information we sent to council to get this thing passed. So somewhere in Gary's records, there is that list. Yeah, somewhere I agree. In all, in somewhere okay. in all the, can, let me finish please. Somewhere in all of this, there's a list or there can be a list of what we've completed I understand that maintenance is an ongoing process, right? Um, but I think that the, the, the list that was created is sufficiently um, descriptive enough for us to understand what exactly was done. Okay, I guess I have a problem. I don't have a problem with reviewing what we have actually accomplished, but I think we've got to keep an open mind that we do maintenance work on the Confluence Pond one year, we might have to do maintenance work on it the next year. I don't, no, no one's disputing that. Well, that's what it sounds like you're saying is that no. once we've completed the Confluence Pond, we are done. No, I'm not suggesting that. I'm suggesting that what we promised was a list of things that needed to be done. And before we move on to, to expanding our scope per the ordinance, we need to show the citizens, we need to show council that we have made significant progress 
in the initial problems. And that now that that's completed, understanding that it may come back to the list because it's routine maintenance, that before we start moving on to these other uh, expanded projects, that we say that we've accomplished what our initial goals were. Even if some of the new projects are more critical in terms of preventing damage to property than the original project. That's a prioritization issue. I, I still think that if, if that I still think that if, that if something's on that original list, uh, we need to have a good reason for not completing it. Okay, that's it's, like, it's just like a road, right? So as an example, Shortcrest roads are probably the worst in the city. They've been, people have been begging the city to repair those roads since at least 2016. People were, you know, we had this huge discussion about, about Kathy's constituent that fell on off a tree root. Well, I, I've had people that have, have been riding bikes and have dropped into potholes and dislocated shoulders. Right. So it, it's <laughs> there's, yeah, there's we fix tons what's of stuff. Worst. <clears throat> Pardon me? We fix what's worse first. Well, I, I think we have to, you know, to have that, we need to come back and mm -hmm. review that. Let's find the list, find out what's left on it, and, and try and get that done before we move on to anything else. I think before you expand the scope, you have to prove that you've come to the scope. It just as a comment, we are at six fifty-two. Yeah. So what? What the motion? Can you? Can you? Uh, did you accept a friendly emotion, or where are we at uh, with the motion? I, I did not. Um, so I don't know what happens procedurally if I don't accept the friendly emotion, I guess. I don't, I, I'd like to hear from Richard or Eric. Do you think this list exists? I mean, I think that list, could be, think it, I think that list could be found and it could be reevaluated as, and then re possibly reprioritized and discussed what has happened. And is there something more pressing now because of the flood of 18? And then I guess that could be the board's will to reorganize or restructure that list with a different list. Well, I guess what we're looking for here really is what's the definition of maintenance so that we can I add know. things to that I list yeah. so that so that we can make good recommendations to the board for things that could be repaired by the board or by the utility without going into Talking the, about the, it for an hour. the other things right it's all right the most the most recent right misty valley and middleton hills southeast ponds were both uh, approved for engineering fees this year and neither mm -hmm. of those projects meet the definition of maintenance um you know the list of assets is attached to the memorandum i sent out and uh you know, aren't all uh, 60 items on that list maintainable? You know, so I, I guess that's my point is I don't think in the five, six, seven years the stormwater utility has been doing business. No, I don't think it has gotten very far. It's, it's coming back to the same argument. This is Warren. I, I'm almost sure Gary had a list back in 2014 to uh, when the utility was approved. Yeah, I'm sure there was an initial five years. Yeah, we had to have one. There's, there's got to be something that's recoverable. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Fine. we wouldn't know how to size how much the utility was supposed to do. We, we put one together, so, so we would accomplish something in so many years. But that's yeah. really just the top priorities of those right. all what, of those facilities. That's what Mark is asking for. Yeah. Eric, okay, so probably in that PowerPoint that I presented to council, there probably is a list of some the top five priorities. 
because I had to convince council that these needed to be repaired or maintained. So Confluence Pond was one. We did vote to do that with money from TIF. Orchid Heights had already been done. So that was probably leaving South Pond, finished dredging Middleton Hills, and I'm not sure what else. We have another meeting in four minutes, so. Yeah. All right. So is what I don't want to do is put is burden the staff so much. If if the request is simply generate or find that list and then also present a list of what has been expended since that time. I, I don't want to have a lot of analysis and uh re uh prioritization or anything like that, Richard. Just just show the list from 2014 and what's been funded since 2014. Uh, I'll accept that as an amendment. Is that Mark? Does that cover it? Yep. Okay. Then we can end discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Then we've run out of time. I can't run out of time. Yeah, we got to do the budget quickly. Rich or Eric, go over it. Here's, I'm showing a list of what was gonna be funded prior. And some of this carry over because we didn't get to it as we were waiting on FEMA funding for the Pheasant Branch re rebuilding or repairs. So the first column is the carryovers, which are going to be moved into 22 for work. Part of the problem is we don't have a lot of staff capacity to deal with a lot more things. So we added just a few things like the ditch repair, which there's a design for already into 2022. The Spring Hill Pond sediment removal, which is just north on the slope of Misty Valley on the west side of High road street, yeah. So we've only really added those two items to next year's budget, just because of workload capacity for city staff. Okay. If you want me to present that to the committee, the finance committee, and the budget package, that's what I will do. Okay. Do we have a motion? or discussion. I'll make Preferably a motion for motion. approval of that, Ms. Warren. Okay, second? I'll second, Ken Potter. Thank you, Ken. Okay. All, any further discussion? Looks reasonable to me. All I, in I favor? I, I, I assume we know what we have, we will have budget for this then in the utilities funds. Yes, because we've made it very clear that the initial $15 per homeowner and the equivalent from businesses is to go to ongoing stormwater projects separate from what was damaged in the flood. Then the flood referendum money goes to flood damage uh, projects. Yeah. Okay. So there's money for this. In fact, there should be more than money because we collect about 240000 250000 each year for the basic utility. And we would only be spending 90000 out of it. But it sounds like staff doesn't have the capacity to catch up and do more. Right. So we can be over. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, budget recommendations are passed. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion, it's Cook. Okay, second? I'll second, Ken Potter. Okay, and all in favor? 
Aye. 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 Just, we are adjourned. Just one side note. This is the same meeting for water resources. Okay. So, so you don't have to log in, don't have to log out. I'm just going to stop recording so that we can start recording again when Eric takes over. Okay. Sounds so we'll good. Just be, just be a couple minutes to switch hands here. I will go get something to drink. Sounds good. You know, be right back. I'm going to get something strong to drink. <laughs> yeah, well.